Good afternoon! We are here today at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago uh, for our next in our series for the Children's Passport from the Chicago Public Library. The Chicago Public Library offers a super helpful system for families called the Kids Museum Passport. The Kids Museum Passport covers basic entry to 19 different museums in the Chicago area for up to a family of four. The group must include at least one child and a maximum of two adults per pass. Just like a book at the library, it is a physical card that needs to be checked out. Passes are first come first serve, so it's good to search for the passes online to see where they are available. For more information, head on over to the Chicago Public Library FAQ site. The link is in the bottom of this video, also in the description, and an eye in the sky. I hope you guys will enjoy coming along with us on the uh, adventure of checking all these places out. There's 19 in total, so we're going to see what we can find. So into the Adler Planetarium we go for our next Kids Passport series. Today is a family day, so there's an extra bunch of free stuff to do for your kids. Uh, it's down in the lower level, so we're going to head there first. And then, of course, this is the essential map, which is also available online. <laughs> you know, I gotta say, I didn't realize there was uh, multiple levels to this place. I completely forgot. I haven't, like I said, I haven't been here since seventh grade. <laughs> All right, well, let's go. You're looking exceptionally adorable today, mister. Your hair is so cute. All right, so we're here on the lower level. So down here, where are we? Oh, we're at the star. <laughs> it's right there. Uh, so it looks like they've got liftoff for Apollo right near here, universe. I did not know there's so many levels. Huh. Well, let's go explore. It's like first things first, we're going into the space visualization laboratory. I wonder what I can do with this. <gasps> wow. So this is, uh, this is a tabletop. They have uh, chairs, places to sit, but it's a tabletop in which you can really like... Well, that's just incredibly cool. Wow. Let's see, let's try to find us. Look at, look at the night sky on Earth. All right, can we find us? First thing I always look for is Lake Michigan. So there's Lake Michigan. My gracious. And there's Chicago. There's my hometown. There's Detroit. <laughs> How fun is that? So this one, this is one of the very few that have the Southern Hemisphere and the Northern Hemisphere on it. How cool is that? Oh, hey, you can see me. Hi. Uh, I just love this because it's ever slightly moving. Kind of hard to do, but it was talking about how um, we used to, instead of being heliocentric, meaning centered of the sun, um, they were fixated on the Earth being at the center of all of everything. So I think that would be Terra centric. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not good with old words like that. A celestial sphere. Different constellations. Ah, uh, that's cool. From 1650. Well. I don't know what these are, but I love them because they're cool. This one is kind of cool, like which one shows the maker's name? And it's this one. An 
orary, which is that thing. So you wind it and then it slowly moves everything around it. That's pretty cool. Can you guess which object is the oldest? Which one do you guys think is the oldest? That thing scares me. Um, I'm gonna go with that being the oldest. What do you think it is? Oh, it's the dude holding it. By the dude, I mean probably Atlas. But this was made in 1480. The man that holds the globe is not that old. We think he's 100 years newer. So the, the actual globe itself. And then the, uh, the one underneath is older. Or younger, sorry. Which object was hung from a cord? Uh, I think it's the astrolabe. I don't think anything else. No, it's the astrolabe. The astrolabe. So everybody, because it's portable and you'd want to use it when you're out and about anyway. So this is the map. We so we started a telescope area in this visual lab, and we walked all the way around here. Oh. Now you can't go through the telescopes I'm, and loop back Because uh, I'm like a little lost. Because I'm like I don't know where we're going. So we, but we went here and went all the way to here. So now we're gonna come across the Chicago nightlife, and then. So Chicago night sky. Life, yeah. And then your universe and everything. And the Atwood Sphere is right here, and the Definity Space Theater. We're not doing a show. Uh, we're not doing a show because the show would, was going to cost us extra. Yeah. So we wanted to do only what the pass allows. We'll come back and do a show at some point in the future. Yeah. But uh, for right now, our little guy is a little bit too young for it, and I think that. Just doing what the base is is already a lot. We also took a picture of what the shows cost, so we'll be putting it in the air right about here now. Yeah. And you can see the different prices and choose what you want to do. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Sounds like there's a lot going on upstairs. He said like the family stuff was happening down here, and I don't see any. Almost be in the community star studio. Yeah. Ready to go check it out? Yeah. Go go. <laughs> Look at those shoes. So the Chicago night sky, we can only see about 35 of the brightest stars because of the light pollution that we have here. So it's kind of fun and interesting to like have the ability to see other things. So you have a, a draw your constellation area. Connecting the dots. Let's, let's, let's draw a constellation here. Star to star, so we're gonna go there to there to there to there to there to there. To there. I made a heart. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Yeah. Skip. I can text it to my seal. I wonder if they'll put it up here. Oh, they will! So here's the night sky. Ah, oh, it's so cute. I'm like a heart. I know I'm saying it weird, but I'm doing that on purpose. So he, down here is where a lot of the, the pop ups are happening. Oh, so this is for the, the Black History Month quilt that they're doing right now, which is pretty great. Quilt sewn together by Dorothy Strada. So they have, looks like they have quilt pieces here, and then you can draw on them or paint on them. Create your own personal pieces. That's pretty sweet. Prior to the Adler Planetarium getting the lenses mm -hmm. that they have that they have to project, yeah. um, they only had the Adler sphere. So this big sphere here was the only way people could get like a night night sky nighttime mm -hmm. look. But it could only show like one thing yeah. type of thing. Old technology, but still working. Yeah, it's been fully restored uh, in by 1999. 
So this is named after Wallace Atwood, the acting director of the Museum of Chicago Academy of Sciences, who designed this 15-foot rotating sphere to help students and the public learn about stars, constellations, and the movements of the sky. It shows the sky at Chicago's latitude of 42 degrees north, and light shines through all 692 holes to simulate the star inside the hollow metal belt. Wow. Now here's what would happen if you were to take out the light entirely. See how we can see more stars when the lights dim. So then we're heading back around to where we originally came down. And then this right here is the Definity Space Theater. So this is one of the three or four theaters? Three, I believe. Three or, three or four, three theaters four theaters that they have here. And uh, that is where they would have one of the shows. But again, we didn't pay for a show, so be able to go in. Oh, do you want to check this out? Yeah, the universe. The universe, a walk through space and time. Stars were sand. The sand in this tiny cube represents the amount of stars seen from the Earth. If this whole column was full of sand, that would represent 200 billion stars of our galaxy. The Milky Way is only one of a hundred trillion, no, hundred billion galaxies in the observable universe. If we tried to show all the stars in the universe with sand, we would need enough sand to cover the whole state of Illinois in a layer 12 feet deep. We're going to go up to the upper level now and uh, we are going to, what are we doing? We're gonna go find somewhere to go eat. Eat. And um, yeah, just sit down for a bit, and then after that, we're probably gonna stay in the upper level, do a little video in there. Yeah. There's not that much in the mid-level, there are two educational hubs. Yeah, we'll we'll hit those out probably on the way out. But yeah, since we're already the upstairs. Yeah, baby. But we're gonna get some food in us, and uh, then we'll go more exploring. The bottom floor was pretty cool, but I gotta say, the upper level is where it's at. This is where it's everything is at. Uh, our little guy's gonna go insane once we have some food in us and go walking around. Uh, Cause just from what we're walking by, he's gonna have a good time. This is the waiting area to go inside the dome. So the dome is directly in front of us, uh, but we can't see it with this installation here. So this is the Granger Sky Theater. Uh, well, what we're in is the Welcome Center, which then goes into the Sky Theater, which is down that tunnel there. So they have the Imagine the Moon going on right now. So we are in our solar system.
you're hiding in my dress. Mister, please get out of Mama's dress. Look at that, look at that. And there goes the baby. He takes after you, I swear. <laughs> Let's go do that. All right, so we're leaving our solar system now. So now we're going to go into Planet Explorers. Yay! So this is Planet Explorers. This is for preschool to grade three kids. And they do have uh, activities and stuff for them to do. Oh, they have a, oh, you can pick some veggies in this little sand pit. This is kind of like the sand stuff that they had at the Children's Museum, which is, looks like a ground up tires. So it's, it's not, it's like rubbery and everything. So they can like kind of get through it. It looks like dirt, feels like dirt, but it's not. Wow. And look at this. They have like a, if, what it would be if you were to come camping. They have a little grill over there, which my little guy went to immediately. And then of course the night sky. Hey, where are you going with those? Are you going to go right here? Are we all ready? Oh, you're going to go grill with those vegetables. Ah, uh, he could, but he uh, he's into baking right now. He's he's baking. Well, I am going to be right here. Right next to there is the campsite area and the log area. And finally over here is the research center. I shouldn't say finally, because we don't know what else is in here. Along with the giant explorer area where the kids can go up and run through. Just so much fun. There's so much interactive stuff. Like you can take the microscope to examine each one of these things. And it'll come up on the screen because it's just like a little, little camera. And so here's the other side. So you go examine that. Here. Say, whoa. There's that. Wow. That's pretty cool. Oh, there's a ramp right here. Oh. Stairs to 321 Lesson. This takes you upstairs to the top of the rocket you can be inside of. So right here they have little areas like uh, tools where the kids can put the hoses on to get the rocket ready to go. So at the base of the rocket, so they want to get the rocket ready. This is super fun. And then inside here, we have pillows that say tools. And snacks and water. We have to put everything in storage, bud. Are you ready to go be an astronaut? He's ready to go. So here we are inside. Oh my gosh. So we walk through here. Oh, here's the area that we walk in space. Whoa. Very confused. What's... Whoa. It's really dark in here. <gasps> is this what I think it is? Oh my gosh, you guys. This is a room with all of these lights and it is pitch dark in here. They go all the way down to this is nuts. So I um, don't something you guys don't know about me. I have a really hard time seeing in the dark. Like the dark is really scary to me because I really legitimately can't see. <laughs> that was freaky. That's so cool. Woo! And we're back. 
So this is the other part of the simulated uh, space station where you can actually go around and pretend to sleep in one of their beds or simulate one of their toilets. <laughs> and it also looks outside to the main hallway. But you can also look at their stuff like their free giant food they have here, stuff that astronauts eat. Cashews, love me some cashews. But it's really cool. Our little man right now is infatuated with the, they can simulate a night spacewalk. So you just go out there and you just see nothing but, you know, uh, the nighttime simulated stars and all that stuff. It's really cool. So we are here at the landing area. Oh, they got a little drone. What's this? Yeah. So we are here in the landing area. Community play area. And yeah, there he goes. He was like, I want, I want to be held. And then that area, he realized what he saw he was like, So this is not that bad. There's also a tunnel the kids can go into. Let's see if we can get him in the go net. And if you want to go to the top side area, here's the back entrance to it. Oh, this is the community area for the kids. In the community play lab, there's this tiny door. My little guy's obsessed with going in and out of it. And in the play lab, they have an aqua area and a softer area with a rug and some toys. They also have a little tent and some building blocks and instruments. Lots of fun stuff. And of course, a, a full sink. And I love the little sink. The little sink's probably my favorite thing in the world. Uh, definitely would have come in here if, if he was even littler. I would have loved to have known about this place. This is a perfect place for like little littles, like infants. This is up for six and under area. But definitely like one year olds would be great here. They got these great rings for even littler guys. And they got a little plate, uh, they have a dress up area. Hey you, what'd you find? What'd you find? What is it, bud? Sun. Go put it back. Thank you. We are now entering the shop of the planetarium. Yeah, so if you want to get a telescope for the kids, little NASA shirts, all this stuff. Nice. Legos. Legos are everywhere. You can also get yourself some uh, telescopes. Different varieties, by the way. You get little astronaut onesies and stuff like that, which are really cute. <laughs> and they even have little plush animals, or plushies of the planets. A lot of cool stuff here. So you want to take home some souvenirs, you can. That's a nice little shirt. It's like a uh, astronaut and little uh, uh, space rockets. And you can't go anywhere without having quirky socks. Oh, these are cool little mugs. No, oh, $16.99 for mugs. One place we didn't go and explore was up here in the blast off area. This actually gives me a good vantage point to kind of look around all the way around here. So over there's the shop and the play lab. And down here is where kids can do that. There's a little rover right here, space rover. And then you got little telescopes like here. So you can look cute. And now we're in the top of the rocket. So the rest of the rocket's down there. And then we have kind of like a simulator for launching the rocket. So you have your buttons down here so you can drive the rocket and go straight up. You are now steering the ship. Use the joystick to steer the ship towards the target on the screen. Oh. 
is a lot harder than you think it is. And over here we have some more of the research center stuff that we looked at earlier. Over there is the campsite and the vegetables. There's the back side of the sun. And then stairs down into the rocket area. I'm sorry, into the rocket area. So yeah. That's where we are. Sorry, buddy. It's closed. All done. I know it's so sad. Do, 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 do. It's so sad. So, what do you think about this place? Not bad. I mean, this is really, really cool. Oh, we're going to the store. Okay. So, that is us for the Adler Planetarium. It was really fun. Um, a lot different than what I remember back in the seventh grade. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, I've never been inside, so it was really nice to kind of go inside and check it out. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it was not as, I don't know, it was. Surprising. It was surprising. It was bigger than I thought it was going to be, honestly, because it looks so small from the outside, but they've got these extra areas yeah the kids area is so much, nice yeah, it's so much so fun. much fun that starry room first freaked me out when i went through it because i can't i can't see in the dark at all blind as a bat totally blind as a bat in the dark and um so like i didn't know where the floor was when i first went through it it was yeah. freaking me out yeah it takes a little bit after you walk through it yeah. a couple times then you figure it out and, and it also helps man loved it though yeah especially because you can see his feet because he, yeah, he has shoes. his lights on yeah. <laughs> i forgot about that but uh, yeah, that was that's the that's the planetarium, and all of its greatness. It's wonderful, and that is another uh, checkbook or check off our list of uh, museum passes. Yeah, so we've got only 17 more to go of these. Now we're not going to post one of these every single weekend or every single week, but we will be doing this throughout the rest of the year. The goal is to try to get all 19 within a year. Yes. No. So we'll yeah, see if we can do that. The reason why we can't do them all, there are some that are restricted to uh season yeah and everything so like like brookfield zoo and lincoln park they're kind of cold yeah. to do right now so we don't want to the uh, the history of chicago bridge museum is closed i don't open till may yeah so uh, we're gonna we're gonna continue doing stuff yeah. um but until then uh this is one of many so keep checking back we might have something new for you guys and like next week or the week after yeah uh but that being said We'll see you guys on our, our next, next adventure. adventure. Bye. Bye.